Today, I will be making methyl iodide, a very useful methylating agent. Just don't get your DNA methylated. Methyl iodide has a very wide range of uses. It is, for example, used in the Hoffman elimination of amines to form the lower substituted alkene product, but it finds its use in other reactions like ether synthesis, substitutions or Grignard reactions. I will be needing it for the synthesis of NN dimethyl aniline, which is a precursor needed to make methyl orange. There are many ways to make halogenated alkanes. One of the most common methods is to reflux an alcohol in either hydrochloric or hydrobromic acid to substitute the alcohol group with the desired halide. Unfortunately, the methyl halides of chlorine and bromine are both gases at room temperature, which makes them rather difficult to handle, and hydroiodic acid will probably get you lots of friends in the government. Moving on, luckily there's another well-established method for converting alcohols into halides by reacting the alcohol with a phosphorus halide. To produce methyl iodide, I will have to react methanol with phosphorus triiodide, which can be easily prepared in situ by reacting red phosphorus with iodine. The chemicals needed for this reaction are methanol, red phosphorus and iodine. There's a lot of bottles here, but the ones in front are almost empty, so I need to restock from the good stuff in the back. Into a 250ml flask, I add 19.45g of red phosphorus, and I then wash it down with 58.98g of methanol. Red phosphorus stains horribly, and it's a bit of a pain to remove, but I'll give some cleaning tips in the end. 229g of iodine are now weighed out in a separate beaker. Elemental iodine is a beautiful crystalline compound with a metallic shine to it. The commonly sold version, however, will come in these small beads. The iodine is then transferred into an appropriately sized addition funnel. The flask containing the methanol phosphorus suspension is added below the funnel with the water bath and a reflux condenser is added on top. The hot plate is then turned on and the water bath is heated to around 80 C to get the methanol refluxing. This setup is a very efficient way to prepare low boiling halo alkanes because the refluxing liquid will continuously dissolve iodine from the funnel and extract it into the reaction flask, similar to a soxyl extraction. This way, the reaction remains very controlled and no external addition is required. The setup is now left to run until all of the iodine has been extracted and is then additionally refluxed for another hour. is now finished and the product can directly be distilled from the raw reaction mix. The funnel and condenser are removed and some white smoke starts evolving from the flask. I am not sure what this is, but I think it's either hydrogen iodide or a decomposition product of the phosphorus. Just in case I am wearing a respirator for this step because I'm sure whatever this is, I don't want it in my lungs. I then attach a distillation bridge to the flask. Everything coming over at around 40 C is collected, which is pretty much the only fraction, and the distillate is additionally cooled with an ice bath, as methyl iodide is quite volatile. At 
the end of the distillation we have about 50 milliliters of product and the flask just feels abnormally heavy. That's a pretty common iodine problem because it's just such a chunky atom, it makes everything that you add it to extremely thick. The distillate itself has a pretty strong brown color, which is due to some elemental iodine dissolved in it. So the product is cleaned with a small workup by washing it twice with saturated sodium chloride solution, which has a small amount of sodium thiosulfate dissolved in it. This will reduce any iodine and pull it into the aqueous phase. The product is then dried with the magnesium sulfate. At this point, if higher purity is required, it can be redistilled, but for my purposes, this is pure enough. I now filter the product directly into a weight and labeled storage bottle and we get to calculate the yield. We have collected 137.7 grams of methyl iodide, which might sound like a lot, but don't forget that 123 grams of that come from the iodine alone. This also means that the yield is a rather disappointing 52%. This is really horrible. Usually it's somewhere above 70% for this reaction. It's not a big issue as it's enough for my purposes, but it's just sad because iodine isn't exactly cheap and I just lost 35 euros worth of yield. My guess is that either the methanol or phosphorus used here were a bit wet or contaminated as both of these chemicals were recycled from earlier experiments, which might have caused some unwanted side reactions. The bottle has a few pieces of copper in the bottom which prevent decomposition of the product. It should also be protected from light by storing it in an amber glass bottle and in a dark place. Now all that's left to do is the cleanup. But before we get to that, did this video get you excited to do some chemistry of your own? Or maybe you already have your own lab and you just realized that you still don't have enough glassware to satisfy your addiction. Cell Supplies is a small company which aims to provide high quality glassware to amateur scientists and is offering a 5% discount to you. So this is the perfect time to hoard even more flasks and beakers because you can just never have enough of those. Or you can get started with your first organic synthesis kit which includes everything you need to begin with your own experiments. They also sell various types of hot plates and even this unique pH indicator lab coat so you can finally notice those pesky acid splashes which always make random holes appear in your lab coats or you just forgot again which beaker you put your acid into. Details are in the description. Okay, there's a lot of dirty glassware left over and getting this phosphorus off can be a bit of a pain, but there are good ways to get rid of it. Firstly, there's still a lot of phosphorus in the reaction flask. This can be filtered off and washed with a bit of acetone to dry it. And if we weigh this, this is 7 grams of phosphorus which can be reused for future experiments. Any metal objects like spatulas can be easily cleaned by burning the phosphorus off with a Bunsen burner. The phosphorus will be converted to phosphorus oxides which can easily be washed off. Technically, glassware could also be cleaned this way, but I destroyed a beaker like this once. That's why I prefer to simply use bleach to destroy all of the phosphorus. The bleach contains a certain amount of chlorine which will react with the phosphorus to form phosphorus chloride which immediately gets hydrolyzed to phosphonic acid. Also, another stupid tip for impatient morons like me is to carefully add small amounts of hydrochloric acid to the bleach. The bubbles you can see forming is chlorine being released as the hypochlorite and the acid react. This speeds up the cleaning process by quite a bit but it can also kill you so definitely do this in a well ventilated area. Once all of the phosphorus is gone, simply neutralize the solution with some sodium thiosulfate and presto your glassware is clean. This concludes today's synthesis. The next video will be a bit longer again as we'll be making dimethyl aniline and tread closer towards methyl orange. Until then, I wish you all a pleasant day 
and stay tuned.